Hello, welcome to everydayhdr.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about processing raw files. And I know most of the time I do HDR related tutorials and HDR post processing related tutorials, but today I really want to focus strongly on uh, the processing of raw files and just why it's so important to shoot in raw. Um, so what I'm going to do is pull in some uh, two photographs. They're both the same photograph, and they're both of my son. Now, um, this is actually really important for your HDR workflow to understand just how much dynamic range is contained in a single RAW file. In this example, I had my settings preset from the night before. I was in aperture priority mode, uh, and I had negative four exposure compensation for the image that I was shooting the night before. Turns out my son and I the next day start going for a walk in the woods and I got this perfect photo op of him just hanging out in the woods. But the problem is I snap, I just took my camera out, snapped a picture, and here it is. It's negative four exposure compensation, really dark. This is the raw image file right here. Watch what happens. So I know this is negative four because my exposure compensation was negative four. So I'm just gonna type in, in this exposure section, a four. And that might be a little too much light. So let's take it down a little bit to something like maybe 3.3 that'll work so I'm already recovering a lot from that image uh, that was that was not there to begin with so that's how much dynamic range is contained in that raw file now I can continue to do this a little bit further like I want to bring out the shadows that are in his face so I can increase the shadows just a little bit um, let me see what happens with the highlights I do want to increase the highlights a little bit because that is sun beaming right through the forest canopy let's see what happens when I increase my blacks all right, I'll just increase those just a little bit because I like what's going on in the background and I'll fix what's going on with this face in a second. So the white balance, as I'm looking at this, is way off. And because it's shot in RAW, I never pay attention to my white balance. That's the beauty and the glory of shooting with a RAW file is that you don't even have to think about your white balance. You can just shoot it because all the camera is showing you when you look through your pictures is an example of the white balance based off of the preset that you had selected doesn't actually record the white balance like it would for a JPEG. It still leaves that up to you. You're gonna see how this comes into play in a second here. So I'm gonna increase the white balance of this to make this a, a nice warm image. About 5300 will do. Let's look at our before and after so far. All right, so I've recovered a, a picture that I would have normally thrown away if I was shooting in JPEG. I couldn't do anything with this afterwards. But now I'm recovering a picture that uh, had no chance, in, in essence, really, uh, if I would have shot it in JPEG. Um, so let's see, let's add some vibrance here, get some color back into this photo. Okay. And now we're going to address the noise. This is where you're going to start to see something come through. Uh, w when it comes to, this was, the ISO was 400. With the Canon EOS 60, 400 ISO is really nothing. And it really doesn't show too much noise. But when a photograph is this dark to begin with and you're trying to recover it, you're going to see some noise. So let's just go zoom in here real quick, and that is quite a bit of noise. But with our uh, detail adjustment, we can go ahead and hike up the luminance a little bit. And we'll also increase the color and decrease the color detail because a lot of the noise that I had here was color noise. So I'll go ahead and take away some of that color detail. I don't want any sharpening right now because all I'm sharpening is noise at that point. So, again, it's not going to be perfect, but it is going to be recoverable. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out real quick. So I'm going to fit this into view. There might be a little too much noise reduction on there. I went a little overzealous with the noise reduction. That'll, that'll probably do it. That'll be good. All right. So now what I also want to do is get my um, adjustment brush. And I'm going to zoom in right here on his eyes because that's a really dark area that should be kind of lightened up. So with my adjustment brush, I'm going to I'm going to make it a selection, and I just want to increase the exposure a little bit and maybe increase the shadows just a little bit. Let's see where this takes us of his eye sockets. Okay, so increase those shadows a little bit, allow more light in there, and increase the exposure just a little bit. All right, so let's see what we got here. much better. It's a little bit brighter. We can't go too much farther than that because if we do, it's going to look really unrealistic. There's supposed to be shadows there, so we'll let there be shadows there. We just don't want them to be too opened up. Otherwise, we're going to lose it. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to synchronize the settings between what's going on with this raw file with this JPEG that I have here. This is the same exact photo, one's raw, one's JPEG. I have my camera on raw plus JPEG, so I was able to get both files. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select both of these by pressing control and synchronize. I want to synchronize everything. I want to synchronize my local adjustments. I didn't do any spot removal, so I don't need to do that. I didn't do any cropping, so I don't need to do that. But I want to I want to do everything else. Press okay. So now everything that I did to this raw file happened to the JPEG as well. The only problem here is that it didn't quite make the image as warm as I'm seeing in the raw file. So what I'm going to have to do is increase the warmth just a little bit to try and make it match that of the raw file. Now what you're going to see here is as I do that, because there is not as much dynamic range in a JPEG, and a JPEG saves the white balance that you had selected, I'm going to lose a lot of the uh, color value in that face. So look at the difference here. Let me zoom in on his face. All right, so first of all, let's look in real close here. This is all JPEG artifact, and let me zoom out to 200%. So all the areas that uh, we brought back here started to form JPEG artifacting. In this photograph, we have noise. In the raw, you'll see noise in his neck area. In the, in the JPEG, you'll see JPEG artifacts. That's a byproduct of not having enough dynamic range and trying to push that JPEG too far. It starts to try and create things that weren't necessarily there to try and appease the settings that you're putting on it. It doesn't always work out so well. So while the JPEG could be what you would call recoverable at this point, to me it's just, it's just not there. I would, probably would have trashed it if it was a JPEG, but the raw file, nice, still nice, clean, crisp, uh, if we zoom into this at 100%, still have some pretty crisp detail here. Still see some of these flyaway hairs. We'll zoom into this at 100%. And the flyaway hairs are there, but they aren't necessarily as um, in detail as this photo. We've lost a lot. Everything's really blurry. JPEG artifacting, especially in his eyes here, where the raw file was still able to recover that and look really decent. The raw file, we pretty much lost it. So this plays in very well with your HDR work as well if you are an HD artist. Uh, if not, uh, you know, just using camera raw, just using, I should say, the raw file, I should say, uh, this should give you inspiration to switch from JPEG to raw. Um, now, how this works with your HDR photographs is that look at how much dynamic range was available in these photographs and why I was able to do what I was able to do with them is because that dynamic range existed. In the JPEG files, it's not going to be so much there. So it will affect your raw or your, your HDR images in the end, I should say. So uh, today I covered how to post-process your raw files and recover raw files that would have been normally lost as a JPEG. My name is Blake Rudis with EverydayHDR.com. Please subscribe to the channel if you like what you see and head on over to EverydayHDR.com and subscribe there because I do a lot, uh, a lot of stuff with Everyday HDR that I don't do here on YouTube. All right, have a great weekend, everyone, and I really hope I, I helped convert you to shooting in raw.